All right, everyone. Um, hello, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful map from start to finish quite quickly. Um, but as Chris said, all the detailed information steps are shared in the link just below the video. So the first step is for me to find the place I want to map. Um, I'm going to be mapping the Lena River in Siberia. And next, I need to choose a more suitable coordinate system. I'll choose a projected coordinate system for the Arctic. All right. Now, sometimes when you do that, you'll see the base map struggle a little bit. Um, it hasn't this time, but often it will because these base maps are not designed for an Arctic projection. So we'll just remove those. Um, and I'm gonna look for an uh, Arctic base map here in the Living Atlas. Just drag that onto my map. Okay. And we see now that the river has a totally different shape. Okay, next I'm going to insert a layout. And you're probably thinking, she's crazy. We haven't even added data. Why, why are we adding a layout already? And I'll tell you why, but first I'm just gonna change the size of this layout for my custom project. So the reason I did this is because I wanna know, I want to decide exactly where the edge of my map is going to be before I add data, before I do anything. I don't wanna waste time mapping things that are over here. Um, Okay, so let's add our map frame in there. I've got snapping on, help me make it nice and neat and tidy. To, to zoom in and out on the map itself, instead of the layout, I'll right click and choose activate. And I can also rotate the map with the A and D keys on my keyboard. And if I need more precise rotation, I can go into map properties. Okay, and I can do more precise scale as well down here. Okay, and now I, I need to zoom out on the layout instead of the map, so I'll just hold the one key down to do that. Okay, that looks about what I want, but before I deactivate this map and return to the layout, I'm just gonna sneak into the insert tab and I'm gonna insert a polygon map note. Now, map notes um, is just a fast way to make data. It added a empty feature class to my map, which I can immediately start to edit and create some new features. Okay, I've got a rectangle. I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's just a little bit bigger than my neat line. I'll show you why in a second. I want it to be a bit bigger so I have some wiggle room. Let's save those edits. And now if I go back to my map, I can see this rectangle that I made, um, which shows me exactly where the edge of my map is going to be. So now I can rotate again with A and D. And it's time to add some data. So before I was looking on the Living Atlas tab, it's time I'm going to go to ArcGIS Online to kind of broaden my search to, to more data sets. There we go. So that's what it looks like. Um, what I was going to tell you, though, is that uh, because this data is so big, when you're zoomed out at all, it's, uh, it's going to be really slow. It's going to bog things down. So I like to already be zoomed into where I'm going to be. And the first thing I do is clip that data. So let's open up the clip tool. And I would put in the water bodies from Living Atlas and I would clip them to the polygon notes. Now, in this case, it's not, as you know, but normally I'd be taking this data from Living Atlas, stored in the cloud somewhere. I didn't download it, but I can still use it in my GP tool. It's important to also set the coordinate system of your map, uh, the coordinate system of this tool to match the map. Otherwise your output is going to have the wrong shape. Uh, now I'm not gonna run this tool because obviously I already did. And here is my data already clipped to that rectangle. It was a slightly different rectangle before. Okay, so now I'm ready to symbolize this and I want some nice watery symbols because it's a water feature. Um, and I don't want to create one from scratch. So back in ArcGIS Online, I'm going to search for watercolor that stylex. This is a symbol set that my colleague John Nelson has made and shared. And you can just add it to your project. I've already done that, so I won't again. But when you add it to your project, and then when you go to symbolize one of your features, you'll get all of these beautiful watercolor symbols. Uh, and he's got a bunch of different kinds out there. You can actually share your own symbols in the same way. 
I'll choose any one because the first thing I'm going to do is just edit it. Here in the symbol properties, I can see that there's a bunch of symbol layers. And I, I kind of just want to simplify things. I just want to use this one. And I'm going to change the color as well to white because this is uh, an Arctic river. I imagine it's covered in ice most of the time. So I wanted it to look like ice, which you'll see in a moment when I make the background darker. Okay. I really like this ice symbol. So I think I'm going to save it so I can use it later. So if we just open the symbol again, I can save symbol to style, call it ice, put it in the favorites folder. That way I have access to the symbol later. I don't have to rebuild it from scratch. Okay, next thing I wanna do is add some text. And there's a number of ways to add text, but my favorite way most of the time is just to use text map notes. So similar to before, we added a map note, it created this new feature class. This time it's creating a new um, annotation feature class. So that means we can start editing it and adding more annotation features. I'll call it Lena River. And I'll make this some curved text. Okay, it's, it's really small. And there is a tool to um, fix that because it's using the wrong scale. But because it's only one piece of text, I find it's actually easier to just use these editing tools and just make it bigger. Right, next I want to change the font. Um, and this is annotations, so the font and all other text attributes are stored as attributes. So I can do that in the attributes pane. Nice, I like high tower text. Um, and I want this to be white, but I don't want a solid white. I want it to look like the icy river. So I can change the symbol of this text and change its text fill symbol to, oh, it's open on a different window there, but there's that ice symbol I saved earlier when I saved it to the style. Okay. The last thing I want to do is um, fix that curve. The curve got messed up when um, I changed the scale. So I can use the edit vertices tool. Same as if I'm editing, you know, a polygon. Oops. Delete vertex and I can move these ones around. And, you know, I could play with this forever, but we only have a few minutes in this demo. So that's gonna be close enough for now. And I'll wanna save my edits. And I think, I, I think this looks really cool where they have the same symbol. So let's head back over to the layout. And you see my clip is a little different than it was the last time I did this, but otherwise I think this math is complete. So I hope you guys do check out the blog and try it yourself because that data set, when you find it, does cover the whole world so you can make a map like this of any river.